Hello, and thank you for joining me on another episode of the Tech Exec Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Aviv Ben Yosef, and this is where we create world class engineering teams. Our subject today is advantageous constraints. Every leadership role, and not just tech leadership, requires a good bit of making things change. You have to push for things to happen. Otherwise, you're just helping with road delivery. Everything has to change with time, be it because you've noticed that you need to improve and learn something new, or be it because something has stopped functioning as well as it should have, and now you're moving back up. And with that comes the need to learn how to push for these changes effectively. That's why I dedicated a whole chapter in my upcoming book, The Tech Executive Operating System, to this matter. Chapter 7 talks about the whole concept of change management in your organization, how to do it effectively. I supply you with a change algorithm within your organization and a bunch of tools and perspectives to help you do it effectively. Now, one of the concepts that I want to talk about today is the fact that sometimes constraints can be used as the best tool to drive productivity and to make change happen faster. By the way, I have a concept that I call the speed of change, and that is how fast does it take you to implement a change? And changes, of course, come in various sizes, but you want to ensure that you perform changes as speedily as you should be. For example, I once had a client go over testing some different suppliers for a SaaS that they wanted to use, and that evaluation took upwards of two months. Why? Simply because they allowed it to. When I kept hearing this and I told him, I'm sorry, we're not going to keep discussing this issue unless you decide what you're going to do there and let's move on. The decision was made within a week or a week and a half. That's all it took. Sometimes the speed of change is fully dependent on how much time you provide it. This is sort of like Parkinson's law, if you've heard about it. And so, sometimes you need to put your foot down. Sometimes you need to say, this is the amount of time you've got. Or, these are the options. Or, this is, rephrase, or you can choose everything you want, starting from this all the way up to this, but choose something within this realm. And all of those are constraints. Good constraints can actually push people fast. Rephrase Good constraints can actually push people forward and faster. That is because you are narrowing down the infinite number of possibilities that they have when they start working on something without any constraints. If you're familiar with Basecamp's concept of the shape up way of working, they call these placing bets. Rather than just decide on something and then start iterating over it for as many iterations as it requires, Basecamp first starts with saying, how much is this concept, feature, product, whatever, worth for the business? And then, for example, they say, this is worth six weeks of work, and their default is for big features is working in six-week cycles. And so they decide that something is worth those six weeks, and they will work with that constraint. They know that they have to have something up and running when those six weeks are done, or they will have nothing to deploy, nothing to show for it. And that constraint actually leverages the entire team to work in unison and come up with the best set of features and the best trade-offs for that investment. Once the stakeholders have said this is what it's worth, we do things by that measure. Where should you be putting more constraints forward? One common example I see is that we tend to treat non-product delivery change as if it were product delivery. And if you're thinking to yourself, what are you talking about, Aviv? Let me be a bit more specific. We do software engineering, product delivery, whatever you want to call it. We often do that in very specific cycles. You have sprints or iterations of two weeks, three, a week, whatever. And that cadence 
often becomes the cadence we operate in, the cadence we think in. We only do things in that cadence. We do not try to do things faster. So if you have a decision to make and you need your team leads to think about something, if you need to research a tool and make a decision about that, if you need to change the way you do on calls in your company and change it from one way to the other and introduce it across your entire organization, often we default to doing it in iterations. So if your default iteration is two weeks, you're going to allow two weeks for it to happen. Or maybe you'd say that doesn't fit within one iteration. Let's do it in four weeks. Supplying a constraint that allows you to think not in iterations, but in the actual time you want to invest in such a change is sometimes all that it takes. I keep using the same story because I really, really like it. Back in the 80s, when Intel's memory business was falling apart, they decided to pivot from memory to processors. And that pivot took them mere weeks to implement. And I'm talking not about the actual implementation of the processors. I'm talking about the business shift. So within, I think, two, three weeks, they moved from focusing the entire business on shipping memory to having salespeople already out in the field with the catalogs of the new offerings Intel will have in the market soon. And they were entirely focused on this new business. And you know, at the time, Intel wasn't what it is today, but it wasn't a tiny garage startup. It was already a formidable business. And they could turn the ship in weeks. Keeping that in mind, how could it ever take your team so long to decide on coding conventions, on the right programming language to use in the new microservice, on the way you should be mentoring or onboarding your new employees, even on things that are a bit more strategic, like should you now be hiring people who are entirely remote because you've realized in COVID you can do it? I help companies entire companies, right? Not just tech executives. I help companies create strategies for the entire company within the scale of a week or two. You should not be taking weeks upon weeks to make a decision to move forward. Put a constraint on it. Decide how long it should take. This all ties to the fact that we set the bar as high as we expect it to be. If you have lowered expectations, people are less likely to rise up and do anything more than that. You have to help them understand what is the standard that you're looking for. You have to create a culture where things that can be immediate are immediate. A culture that does not stand analysis paralysis. Move forward. Make the decisions. Stop waffling. Put in a few constraints and all of a sudden things become that much easier. If you had to make the decision, the same exact decision, but you have to make it within a week, what would you do now? That's my question for you, and that's for you to keep in mind. That's it for this week. Thank you, as always, for joining me. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the best newsletter online for tech execs. I mean it. You can't find anything else. If you find something better, let me know. I'll give you a full refund. You're going to get all the details for the upcoming book and a bunch of very, very unique content I've never done before very soon. Hopefully, as soon as my kids are out of the house because we're in week number five of lockdown and I barely can record this 10-minute episode without being interrupted. So very, very soon, I'm hoping you're going to get some very interesting content. I've never done this kind of content before, so check it out. That's it. Thank you for joining me. I hope you're going to get a vaccine soon. I'm already after shot number two. Keep safe. Talk soon.